maybe you've begun to realize this more so than I have. Maybe you understand this better than I do. Or maybe, no matter what you do, irregardless of how you think it's going to work out, it just doesn't work. <laughs> That's the way I feel sometimes. There are times in ministry that you'll discover that it doesn't matter if you have the right answer. It doesn't matter if you're doing exactly what Jesus said. It doesn't matter if he spoke directly to you and said, this is the way, walk therein, or this is what I want you to do, and this is how I want you to do it, and you do exactly what he says. If it's meant to be, then you might wind up walking out into some quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> and pardon me but struggling in quicksand doesn't do you any good if anything when you wind up in quicksand the more you struggle the worse it gets the less you struggle even though you're still sinking the better it gets because sometimes if you stop struggling long enough you can look around and see if there might be some way to extricate yourself from the mess that you're in because it's quicksand there's either too much word, too much water, too much dirt, too much sand. Somehow, it's a bog. And when you're in a bog, or a quagmire, or quicksand, or some type of environment with mud, clay, or any kind of like sucking thing that's like a big hole, you don't look at it and realize it's a big hole. You don't know how deep it is. Because, see, what's happened is that there's this big old hole and it's been dug. It's a pit, so to speak. And what happens is that things get put inside that big hole that kind of disguises it, makes it look like it's full. And then what happens is that a lot of water of some kind, it's got to always have these, always has to be a lot of water. But somehow a lot of water gets put in there. And that water makes that covering insoluble. In other words, it's not solid. It won't hold up. It looks firm. It may seem firm. It may even have a thin layer sometimes, maybe of like a crust of some solid ground. But underneath, it's just water and dirt or mud and clay or whatever it may be. But it's just going to, once you step into it, suddenly your weight... <laughs> It just begins to suck you down. It's like, whoa, and you're going down. And what you do is, if you try to wiggle or you try to move around and you try to get out of it, you're actually digging yourself into it more so. Is that it kind of like, you know, begins to move what little firmness you had from the dirt. It moves it out from under you and you just seem like, you know, you're trying to go up, but you're actually going down. So you see, inactivity sometimes is the best activity when you find yourself in that. And there are times where no matter what you did ahead of time, you can't get yourself away from once in a while getting into a quagmire or quicksand. And sometimes that quicksand may be the circumstances of you stepping into it where God sent you, or sometimes maybe you stepped into it where God didn't send you. Either way, there's always something to be learned from it. So. When you do step in quicksand and you kind of like, you know, don't really understand the circumstances, the situation, remember, there's always the opportunity to learn from it. There's always the opportunity to go through it. There's the opportunity to maybe have it kill you, which, to be perfectly blunt, that's not such a bad deal. <laughs> You're going to live forever. Let's get out of here, get rid of all the pain and suffering and get on with what we're really going to do. I mean, for me personally, I kind of look at it like, hey, you know what? God, if you ain't getting me out of this mess, then I'm checking out because I'm going home. <laughs> so, don't be surprised if sometimes in life that circumstances are like a quagmire. Sometimes there's just too many of them, too much of it. All this stuff has come upon you. It's like too much stress and you're like underwater, so to speak, and you're up to your neck, you know, and you just think you're going to go under for the last time. Well, no. You're not, because whether you know it or not, you don't know how deep that hole is, and you don't know when someone's coming along to rescue you. There may be, at some point in time, God sending someone to rescue you out of that quagmire, 
that he wanted you to get into or you may have not known that he allowed you to get into in some way so that way someone else could reveal something of their nature by way of helping you. See, sometimes it's not all about you. Sometimes God uses you to let a lesson be taught to someone else. So, if you are doing what God wants you to do and suddenly you go, how did this turn into a, uh, a quagmire? Well, it can. It can turn into quicksand you know, for you sometimes. Sometimes sharing love even can turn into quicksand. Sometimes life itself will bring those momentary lapses of solid ground and footing that you think that you had. When in reality, God's just saying, hey, it's okay. I knew you were going to wind up in it. So now I'm going to take you through it and I'm going to bring you out of it in my timing and my way. So whatever you do in all that you do, commit it unto the Lord and trust Him. No matter what it is or how it appears to you, even when you know you've done right, even when you know that you've been doing everything just the way you know that God wanted you to do it, you know, and you were feeling like really smooth sailing until you went, slick, <laughs> and you went, oh, I'm stuck. Well, when you're stuck, stop. That's it. Pretty simple. Look up. Pay attention. Talk to God. If He doesn't answer, wait on Him. Sometimes waiting is the most important thing you can do in life. Most of the time, people want you to hurry up and make a snap decision when God wants you to trust in Him and be still until He reveals what He wants for you. I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried unto you. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where floods overflow me. Waters overflowed my head. Then I said, I am cut off. I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thine ear at my breathing. Don't hide yourself from my cry. You drew near in the day that I called upon you, and you said, Fear not. Will the Lord cast us off forever, and will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? And I said, this is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord God Almighty. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Much of our experiences in life always seem to fail in that momentary haste and waste of so much energy when we get despair or despondent rather than trusting that this is meant to be where we're at at the moment we are being what we are. Because God is able to use every moment of our life for His glory. He created us for fellowship with Him. He created us to have intimacy and relationship with Him. He created us for His good pleasure. So, in everything we're going through, it's not as though it's like abhorrent to God in some way to see how we're dealing with it or somehow distant from us as though He promised to be with us always and then suddenly yank back that promise because of some sin we've committed or some error or some mistaken identity, you know, personification that we made unto God that God says, hey look, that's your interpretation of who I am. My interpretation is I gave my son. If I've given you my son and you have my son, then I accept you and I love you and I will do all for you. So don't let circumstances at times ruin or cause you to lose your faith in some way that you don't recognize that Jesus has gone through that same time where, yes, other things are going to dictate your future existence even, or your future resolution of some problem you're going through. Because Jesus was allowed, even after Gethsemane, to be manhandled. He was taken forcibly by the Roman centurions and guards, and then he was beaten, and then he was taken to another court, and he was convicted there and sent on to another court and convicted there and sent on to another court. In other words, 
don't be surprised if things manipulate against you and you're innocent. Because if they've so done so to Jesus, then likewise they'll do unto you. So a lot of life isn't about so much so worrying or stressing about what we're momentarily going through. Because that's hasty thinking. But we look at the long-term effect and we say, hey, I'm out of here. At the end of my life, I'm going to be perfect. At the beginning of my life, I was imperfect. What it takes me to get in between the two is up to God to see me through. And that's how we relate to Jesus every day, personally and intimately. We trust him for everything that we go through. No matter what we do, we trust him to see us through. That is the way that God has led us today. That is how God speaks to us every day. Because as we put our faith in Him, then it's not dictated by circumstances or some kind of, ooh, look how deep we've sunk all the way up to our nose. Hey, you know, if you snort a little quicksand, guess what? You die. Because it'll go inside, you know, and you suffocate. But the point is, Guess what? When you close your eyes in death, you wake up into eternity. So death, if it has no sting and you have no fear of it because you know where you come from and you know where you're going, then the reality of all that you live in the meantime is joyful because there's nothing that can harm you or take you away from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus and there is nothing that can separate you from Jesus himself because he's in you. He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son of God of course, has not life. <laughs>